Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Soliatos, brought to you by his book, The Bible of Bodybuilding, available on Amazon.com, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PEDs while you're on Amazon buying books. Be a, be a deer and get my book, Real Bodybuilding. And now, all the way from Athens, Greece, just back from Birmingham, England, please welcome Dr. George Soliatos. Hey, Doc. Hi, Ron. I always like the fact that you're on point always, and you were at least are very relevant to the to the topic. So when we had Gaspari, you were the Gaspari. Yeah. When we had, let's say, Kerry, you had the Mr. Olympia, the Olympia here. Now you have England. I've had this. I've had this on for 24 hours. I know that sounds horrible, but I, I wore this for the uh, the play by play hearing. So, unfortunately, I mean, <laughs> you were the first one to know that this was the last Arnold because next year we'll have another name, and uh, learning from you actually. Oh yeah, and, you know what I heard. The rumors was that he he demanded a fee, Arnold. You know, um, and uh, surprisingly, he didn't appear this year. Also, even though last year the very first, you know, was the very first Arnold, and he had an excuse last year, but this year, as as I mean, repeating this thing was a little bit disappointing for the fans. And I have to tell you that it was a little bit more crowded last year. Yeah, you know it. Arnold always gets a fee. That's standard at all these shows. So that was not, there was nothing new about that. There's also, it'll all come out eventually, but I guess people like weren't paid. Like Lee Haney never got paid to be there. So he didn't go. Ronnie Coleman didn't get paid. Well, off the record, I told you what's happening. So some people don't get paid. Others perhaps are more lucky. But uh, you mentioned that officially that the athletes, uh, I mean, it was under um, risk in order to get paid. Yes. I mean, they are pros, come on. Yeah, you know, they had to make a post telling everyone, don't worry, they're going to get paid, which we've never, when was the last time you saw something like that? Like, that shouldn't be, they shouldn't have to worry about that. That's like, no, because UK, UK is a large country. I mean, it has uh, this, um, um, it's the largest European country that after, of course, Germany. That's, it's very prestigious, you know, as a country. So, um, jeopardizing athletes' fees, something that it's a low class, you know, something not cool. Anyway, um, the expo the, the expo was was like last year, more um, European brands and uh, UK brands. I was I was happy to meet George Farah, give him my book, and I I met uh, Andrew over there. I have to tell you, his his arm. These guys are phenomenal. I mean, they are genetic freaks. His his fingers were as big as mine. Very. Uh, rough, uh, you know, his palm, but his handshake was enormous. And even though he was dieting, he was huge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he won, he won the, the the show for second thing, uh, second it was his second win yeah. this year, I guess. Uh, and he's a big favorite. Then Al Farah has also blessing, and uh, kudos to him because uh, he's really successful. Yeah, he's got all sure. the best. You got all the best Nigerians except Samson. Milos has Samson Dauda, the other Nigerian. And by the way, uh, Blessing looks very similar in the structure with uh, Anjua. Yeah, tall. Anjua is very good separation. He has a bit taper, also round bellies. Yeah. yeah so, so you were there for uh, balance my hormones. You were you were uh, working with them. Yes, yes. I I'm surprised. Yeah, you have videos. Yes. It's a good thing, I guess. You went home early. You didn't watch the show. You flew home yesterday. Listen. <laughs> Because uh, the flight uh, was supposed to be in the afternoon, but uh, plus the two time, uh, two hours uh, difference, the time zone with Greece. The next flight, I would come here 2 a.m. in the morning. Do you know what time that thing got done last night? Almost midnight. You see, yeah, almost the, the overall gets too late, you know. Uh, I mean, a lot of shows I go to here in the U.S., they're done by 10 o'clock at the latest. Uh, Tim Gardner shows I love because... A lot of times, Tim Gardner shows like Chicago Pro, Tampa Pro, it's over and it's still light out. It's like six o'clock because then he does the amateur show. I love that. You got the whole night. But uh, And I'm glad that I had an agreement with Panata, you know, the large brand of the equipment. Yeah. I'll be hosted in Italy next month for a couple of days. Oh, wow. Yeah, the final agreement. I'm really satisfied because he mentioned Steve Blackman that is uh, uh, supportive of, of, of Panata. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve also told me to give my best regards to them. So yeah. it was a good atmosphere. It was successful for me. Um, and I'm looking forward for the... I, I, I met also... Um, I mean, I catch up with Sean Ray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Panata. So, I've actually only used Panata equipment in the last couple of years at the Redcon gyms in uh, Nashville and Florida, in uh, Brooklyn, yeah. Florida. 
He's got a bunch of, they got a bunch of Panada pieces. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're so smooth and the kinesiology is awesome, you know? They're awesome, yeah. I mean, we don't have much, very, 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 sophisticated. very, yeah, very sophisticated. I would say that it's more sophisticated than Hammer or um, the other one, which is called... Uh, uh, Hammer Strength. There's another one, Arsenal Fitness, we have in the U.S. is a, is a big brand. But yeah, Panada stuff, uh, great. If you ever get a chance to use it, guys, I love that but we don't have much of it here in the U.S. It's very rare, very hard. To it has 500 different machines. So, Oof. for instance, 10 different machines for the biceps. Crazy, eh? Jeez. And in Kuwait, they're starting uh, building gyms with Panata. Wow. <laughs> well, they can afford it. All right. Well, let's get into some questions because we got a lot of questions. So let's get started. Yeah. Number one, what is the optimal ratio between testosterone and E2? Is it 10 to 1? Well, I would say between 5% and 10%. So if you have 1,000 testosterone, between 50 and 100 uh, is to dial, okay? okay. Uh, so it's 10 to 10, 20 to 10, 10 to 20 to 1, basically. Yeah, of course, uh, I believe this is under aromatase inhibitor control. Otherwise, it gets out of control, the estrogen, you know? Gotcha. Well, that was simple. Next one's a little longer. Hi, Doc. I'm currently running slightly higher dose of TRT, 125 milligrams test D every three days. So he's doing 250 every six days. And I'm on testosterone gel, about 25 milligrams every day. Hard to say how much gets absorbed. I'm looking to put on more considerable size. I was wondering, in your opinion, what else can I add to this test base to gain some more muscle mass and size? I'd rather add in another injection than an oral. What's your best advice? I'm 31 years old, 190 pounds, and I've been training for over 10 years. Diet and nutrition are well dialed in. Well, I would say it's overkill. Uh, mixing together injectable with a cream unless you want to have an intercourse this is the only uh, reason for me to justify the scrotal cream uh, along with the injectable in order to spike that particular hour yeah. um now he can add of course deca so 250 of testosterone plus 100 milligrams of nandrolone split it also in two doses 125 and 100 milligrams so that makes 250 and uh, 100 do it uh, once a week, you know, or every 3.5 days, let's say Monday and Thursday. Okay. Next one is kind of similar, but this is a good question. Doc, is 250 milligrams of testosterone and 250 milligrams of DECA a week going to give you a massive boost in muscle building or do the amounts need to be increased? How much? 250? 250 test, 250 DECA a week. Is that enough to get huge? I don't think so, no. But it's a, it's a further, besides, uh, you're going to have issues with sex drive because according to the laws of 19 or you need double of the test. So 500 tests and with 250 DECA. But I don't think, besides that, uh, the lazy people count on just on the doses. So if you bust your ass with uh, all year round training, diet and supplementation, you may minimize the milligrams of the gear. Um, but to be fair, uh, I wouldn't say expect something well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you can't say that X amount of dr this drug is going to make this person give you X exactly. amount of results. Exactly. Exactly. It's no mathematics, you know. It's like, if I tell you how many would two beers get me drunk? Some people would get drunk off two beers. Other people need 20 beers to get really drunk. It's, you know, we're all different, so... It doesn't mean that Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney uh, use the most drugs of all, you know? It's genetics, care. hard work. We know that. Yeah, we've all known people who use tons of drugs and didn't get anywhere near that That's side. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, boy. I don't know if you want this one because we answer this every week. How to avoid hair loss while on steroid cycle. Yeah, we said that. So you just need testosterone, nothing else. Testosterone mm -hmm. growth hormone. Nothing else can be blocked. Um, only testosterone, the reduction of the DHT+. Plus four other compounds, orally finasteride, shampoo ketoconazole, and foam locally, two testeride plus minoxidil. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Okay, this is a little longer one. Uh, I tried to help this guy on an Ask Ron, but I said, I can't. We need a doctor for this guy. Hey, Ron, I'm a 55-year-old former semi-advanced competitive bodybuilder, national level, obsessed with training still and keeping my swole look. I was around 293 pounds at my heaviest off-season when I competed. I'm currently downsized over the years to 225, 230 at 510. I've been off all TRT and all super supps, supplements of any kind for about four months now. I've taken something for many years, but decided, uh, but had decided to go pure natural and take store-bought supplements instead. My blood work, kidneys, liver, and heart tests are excellent, according to my last checkup and test two months ago. 
Can you or the doctor, it'll be you, tell me if there would be a safe cycle to take if I want to get back up to a good solid and hard 250 pounds again, but safely, I very much would like to do a master show one last time. Hmm. Well, to be honest, and forget about the masters, forget about getting 250 at your age, mm. be humble and just follow HRT. Yeah. What you used is in the past, what is done is done. And if you wanna look this from the uh, a physician's perception and uh, from a health uh, perspective, you know, just use moderate use of testosterone and perhaps even less for your joints with nandrolone and a little bit, a little bit of GH just for anti-aging. That's all. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm, I was talking, we did a show with Milo Sarsha uh, like a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to him about the Masters Olympia. He, you know why he thinks it's a bad idea? He says, I don't want 50, 55, 60 year old guys blasting gear. That's terrible. That is good. I heard from Milos, you know, a hardcore guru that yeah. thinks it's a disaster. And somebody else who said that, uh, Sean Ray, the so much, the, 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 the masters and of course the super masters is a bad idea because you don't need a more dead people. Yeah. I mean, come on, this is it, man. I mean, like you said to the gentleman in the past, it's time for me to accept because I'd still love to do one more show, but. How healthy would that be for me? Not very well, healthy. If you have the, the perception of the champion, it's all or nothing, okay? Right. Because you're going to regret it if you step on stage at the second or third place. Yeah. It's all in the mind. If you are all or nothing, it means that you have the, the mentality of the champion. But the cascade is next. You know, I'm waiting. Yeah. I mean, this gentleman, like myself, we're lucky to still be here when a lot of people, a lot of people my age are dead. God gives you one day more, you know, this is a, this is a blessing and you shouldn't be arrogant to that right. and take as a granted in life. You know, when you lose something, you, you, uh, you start uh, respecting this and evaluating. Yeah. Sir, the doctor told you what you need to hear. I'm sure it's not what well, you this want is my, to hear. This is my opinion. Of course, yeah, he's a, he has a, the free will to do, you know, do whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay. What's EFGR before I get to this question? This uh, it's question. the glomerular filtration rate and it's an uh, index. Okay. How well the, the, the kidneys filtrate. Okay. I should know that. I know. But <laughs> so that it's, I thought it was a GFR, isn't it? I thought it was GFR. Yes, GFR, yeah, GFR. Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. So this gentleman says, was a runner, EFGR 104, was injured and stopped running, started weightlifting and TRT 250 a week from, from a doctor. EGF, now he says EGFR, make up your mind, sir, dropped to 74 in one year. However, I gained 30 pounds, weight 200 pounds. Any ideas? 44 years old, feeling good. Doctor doesn't mention it. Thanks. Of course, this is very reasonable, simply because GFR is proportional to creatinine and, propo and creatinine is proportional to the BMI. Mm. So the more muscle you have, the more creatinine they contain that will be metabolized to creatinine. The higher the creatinine, the lower the GFR. So simple as that, you know. So lean out, I mean, lose um, BMI, uh, drop in weight, at least to be shredded with as much muscle as you hold. And believe me, the GFR will elevate. Also, we need to see how much the creatinine, but hydrate more generally, check out your blood pressure, avoid stimulus, avoid, uh, of course, tremble on that. It kicks the, the blood pressure. And... Uh, you have to be careful because the kidneys is a, is a is a system that gradually declines, not just the liver, you know, that has a, a disease, but the kidney failure, the chronic is something gradual. And eventually you walk up one day and you have a dilemma, dialysis or transplantation. Mm. You know, you know, what my blood pressure was last week when, when I checked it? it was 118 over 68. Very good. Mm. But, but you, have, you have to measure Monday to Sunday every day and calculate the average okay yeah. well this was at the doctor's i did a stress test we had to run on the treadmill with the oh EKG. very well so it was negative the stress test yeah they said you excellent know, a little bit you had any this this me you know dysphoria something uh it was short a little of breath bit, no no i don't i don't have any of that the only thing they said was i guess when the heart uh when it empties there's like a little bit goes back in yeah but did you feel discomfort short no, of breath no no I mean, it I took do, over. It took over a quarter of an hour, ten minutes. No, I, I was in there a good all together on the treadmill. I was probably only on it about 10, 15 minutes. Yes, I was, yes. I was in that because was it uphill? Was it uphill? Yeah, they kept raising the ramp, the incline, and I had to go. And the and the speeds. 
by the end I was running and I, they wanted to get my heart rate up. And then I sat back down and they put the AKG on and looked at the heart on the screen. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far so good. All right. Uh, this is weird. Does testosterone help with skin tightening or thickening, giving an overall more youthful appearance or is only GH able to provide this effect? Testosterone makes the skin more elastic because of the sebum production. So the, the skin doesn't crack that easy. That's why African people that have more sebum, they're more elastic their skin. Yeah. Uh, so having less wrinkles. And uh, well, GH does the real job in skin. It's more firm, but actually DHT makes the scrotum of the skin more firm, you know, and tight. <laughs> It's pretty wrinkly skin, skin down there. Have you ever heard the phrase? We have a phrase in America, black don't crack. Have you ever heard that? No. So it's but the, I get the I get the picture. Yeah. Yeah, they, it's very smooth. They don't they don't yes. get the crazy yes. deep, terrible wrinkles that a lot of the, like white women have these crow's feet. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I've seen a lot of 60-year-old women with not black women with not one wrinkle. Perfectly smooth faces. God love them. All right, next one. Training question. We like these. We don't get to talk about training that much here. Guy says, I like the dumbbell pull over lats, but as I get older, it gets risky to shift 100 pounds over my head. Is the old school Nautilus pullover machine a good substitute, as Dorian Yates used to say? Absolutely, yes. I tried the Nautilus machine at the Zach, Dr. Zach's gym in London, where uh, uh, this, this place reminds you of Jay Cutler because Jay is all over. <laughs> Jay trained there. And nice. he, as Dorian said, and the one who invented it, I don't remember his name. Arthur Jones. Yes, exactly. It yeah. perfectly isolates the lats because there's no movement of the biceps. Yes. And you just move uh, the lats a little bit, the pecs, though. Mm. They but, stretch. man, they the stretch. stretch. The stretch. Like and the contraction is enormous, okay? Yes, exactly. So it's an excellent idea. Do You, have you can do it also, a variation in the cable. Like that, that's how I do it because I don't have a pullover machine in my gym, do you? No, no. Yeah. But you need to have the elbows almost straight and tight. You know? Yeah, they call them straight arm pullovers. And this is a perfect warming up because it isolates without engaging the real delts of the bias. Yeah. Dorian used to start every back workout on the Nautilus pullover to, to pre-fatigue his lats. And when I used to train with Jose Raymond, every time we did back, he used to start out with cable pullovers because we didn't have a pullover. It, it matches perfectly well with the reverse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was Dorian's first exercise, reverse grip pull downs every time on the on the cable. I saw Dorian, by the way, he looks much bigger in life rather than in videos, you know. Mm. I mean he's still he was impressive, even though he does yoga and uh, he's into replacement therapy. Uh he's a good looking guy. Yeah, I mean he's living his life. You know, I I, mm. I take my hat off to him for mm. going beyond bodybuilding, not clinging to it and trying to be yeah, huge. He didn't become toasted, he switched, you know, the proper time. And he enjoys life now. Yeah, very hard to do. Doctor, your thoughts on injecting windstraw subcutaneously in the on the stomach area? Well, I never tried it, but since it's um, water based, you can try that. Yeah, because it, it hurts terribly. But I injected the windstraw in my delt, mm -hmm. shallow intermuscular, so it's not really painful. Yeah, it's like than doing in, in the, deep in the glute, you know. But subcutaneously, I mean that's. People using like a like a little insulin pin. I'm, is that is that really good enough? Yeah, but not for the suspension of the testosterone because large particles. But windstall, if you shake it really well, not stir mm. it, yeah, then it gets the milky appearance and it's good if it's legitimate. Wow, make sure it's milky, guys. Uh, the doctor mentioned taking metformin. What's your opinion on berberine or dihydroberberine instead of metformin? I tried berberine for three months. A patient of mine from Vegas. Uh, he was from uh, Vancouver, a Greek. Uh, he mailed me three boxes of berberine. So I tried one gram for three, for, uh, no, no. He, he, he mailed me three bottles of 90 capsules. I was using three capsules a day. So for three months, I used berberine. My A1C didn't drop significantly. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, berberine doesn't lower the mTOR or the, you know, the edge of one. But uh, as a doctor, I'm in front of medication. So try the metformin, which is the real deal to avoid insulin resistance. Mm. There was a bodybuilder in, uh, in Birmingham that asked me, can you use uh, metformin post-workout? It has nothing to do with insulin release. It just improves the insulin sensitivity, the assimilation, okay? Mm. You can use it, though, if you use GH to avoid insulin resistance. But it's not the thing that I'm going to eat tons of stuff and take the 
with form. It doesn't work this way, but progressively through the insulin sensitivity. Okay. Okay, fair enough. What is depot testosterone or is it depot? Depot testosterone and what is it used for? Used to be the standard pharmaceutical product, but I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, depot is actually means of slow release, like Primo, Primo Depot, mm. or even Stanozolo, Winstrol Depot, yeah, even right. though it was a water based. Uh, well, the water based Winstrol is slower than the acetate, which is the peel. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyway, depot means of slow release, which is enanthate ester. Testoviron was testosterone depot, and Primo Bolan was methanolone enanthate. So mm. it's of slow release. It's not like acetate or propionate. So depot, depot was, means depot once an an, It's an anthate depot? Which, yeah, of course. Depot? Depot. Oh, I thought it was the undecan, undecanate. No, no, no. Testoviron oh. in Greece, the German uh, stuff was depot. It was enanthate. Yeah. And also Primo was enanthate depot. Yeah. I remember those testoviron uh, ampules from Germany, they were brown. Very right? painful, very dense. <laughs> the, 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 oil, the oil was pure, you know, white. I mean... Uh, Good times. Yeah, but at least it was real. Yeah, I was getting those back in the nine, late 90s for $12 an amp back in California. Uh, in Greece, it was three bucks. Oof. Yeah, good <laughs> deal. What a deal. Doc, does Primabolin act as an aromatase inhibitor and is it good for immunity? I want to say that it's as potent as aromatase inhibitors, the DHT derivatives, even DHT self like masteron or proviron, drostanol or mesterolone, are not acting that potent as antiestrogenically, but yet they have a, a moderate antiestrogenic effect. I noticed that now lately that I started using from January until April uh, 70 milligrams of Primo per week. Yeah. And I have to tell, I was in my leanest since I competed, you know. Prima Ball has been a stable for contest prep since the Arnold days. Yeah, it's been around. Well, a it's a weak anabolic, but uh, at 600 milligram, you can retain muscles when you stack it with other stuff. And it doesn't aromatize. It's a good thing. You don't have to worry about. Okay, cool. Uh, doctor, is a small dose of alprazolam, would it help with recovery by lowering cortisol? Is What is, al what now, is alprazolam? Put this compound, it's a barbiturate. So... Uh, it actually is a stress relief. Uh, and through this, of course, the cortisol may lower, you know. Mm. Some people who have panic attacks and uh, elevate blood pressure, they give them uh, benzos in order to relax yeah. and lower the blood pressure and the cortisol. But I would say for cortisol control, you need DHEA, you need testosterone because it is antagonistic with uh, corticosteroids. And of course, you need asvaganda, rhodiola, phosphatidylserine. All right, and avoid fasting and avoid uh, staying up all night. Yeah, I think is it close? Is it that's not the trade name for uh, Valium? Isn't the trade name? I think that's Diazepam, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's something. Diazepam, very, yeah. I can't think of Alzheimer. I, I can't think of the trade name for this drug, but I, I'm pretty sure I've I've seen it before. Hmm. Anyway, uh, here we go. I have trouble with high estradiol, no matter how low my testosterone dose. Since I convert so highly to estrogen, I'm thinking about exchanging testosterone for DECA on my current cycle. Currently, I'm on 350 milligrams test propionate, wow, and 600 milligrams equipoise, taking a quarter milligram Arimidex per day and still experiencing high estradiol. Thinking about dropping the test altogether and replacing with DECA at 500 milligrams. At the rate I aromatize, I don't think low estrogen could ever possibly be a problem. What do you think, Doc? I go back to a dose of testosterone after the cycle. Long time ago, finasteride. I took finasteride, and I believe that is why I convert so highly to estrogen now. Hmm. Well, this is a point. When you block the one metabolite, you increase the other. But nevertheless, he's, he uses uh, less than what he needs from aromatase inhibitor. So one quarter every, every day or every other day is about two milligrams of anastazole per week. He needs three milligrams of anastazole with 300 milligrams of testosterone plus 600 cupose. So he's uh, using lower anti-estrogen than what he needs. And I, I suggest to down uh, to, to go down in the in the dose of uh, equipose, okay? Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't aromatize that much. And um, uh, 300 testosterone per pionate, uh, is is not a large dose, but I would say when you stack it with that much with a cupos, go for three milligrams of anastasol per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
Yeah, I, I don't know who takes test propionate. Like, unless you're right up competing in a contest, very quick, very soon. Yeah, well, listen, it's contradicted because the propionate is a very, uh, sorry, propionate is very fast ex extra, and actually acupose is on the cyclinate, which is way slower than the deca, so it's contradicted. Yeah. Use testosterone on plate, for instance, if you want to use acupose, all right, or use MPP instead of acupose, yeah. all right? Fair enough. And our final question, my grandmother is 96 years old. Her leg bone was broken. Last week, she had surgery on her leg. What are the best supplements or medications or peptides that are beneficial for recovery, in your opinion? So vitamin D3, K2, 5,000 I use with breakfast. Boron, 6 milligrams a day. And uh, sunlight, plus 50 milligrams nandrolone per week. Yeah, I mean, you had... Injectable. Your grandmother, when you, you lost your grandmother, was it last year or the year before? Yeah, 108. And we, she, she was running 100 deca every two weeks for two years. Yeah, and it helped her a lot. And I have to it? tell you, she had zero muscle waste in her, wow. her thighs were strong without cellulitis, you know? Wow. At 108 years old. Wow. She never had a fracture in her life. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job. Well, she had, a, she had a doctor for a grandson, so that helped. <laughs> Otherwise, I think she would have been in trouble. Uh, well, that is all the questions, doctor. Uh, good to have you back from the UK. I'm sure you had a great time over there. Uh, I'd say I'd go over there for the Arnold UK next year, but there is no more Arnold no, UK. No, it's really exhausting, Ron. I lost five pounds from, I, I did 18,000 feet uh, on, on Saturday. <laughs> on your oh. Fitbit? <laughs> yeah. And London is a cool city. Yeah, it's very organized. Yeah. Um, and were now were, the next step, the next step is Vegas, of course. You were in Birmingham. Did you go to London too? Yeah, I, I was for two days in, um, okay. I was hosted in two days in Lauda. I enjoyed the city. Yeah, it's really cool. So next up, yeah, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oof, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to Las Vegas uh, next month and for the Olympia, but I'm going. Oh, really? I'm going for Halloween. Yeah, I love Halloween. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. And guys, uh, next week, we're going to have a very special guest. We're going to interview the fit rock star, Isabel Terrell here. Yeah, yeah. We'll start having now new guests. So that's going to be. Uh, is it the first lady we're going to host, huh? I th yeah, right. It is, I met her at the it? Arnold, yeah, and she told yeah. me something. You know, she gave me a compliment, and I was flattered. She <laughs> told me, "Keep doing what you do; it's a good job." <laughs> yeah, she's. I love Isabel. She's she's funny. She's she's cool. She's very yeah. beautiful, feminine. You know, she has a lot of fun, and she's a friend of Bob Chick. You know, she's jacked. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's next week, guys. Right here on Ask Doctor Testosterone. In the meantime, if you like the videos, please hit the like, share the video. Leave some comments. If you have a question for next week, leave that in the comments below. We'll get to it next week's show. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and hit that notification bell in the corner so you know when Muscular Development releases all our awesome video content. And that's it. Until next week, this has been Ask Dr. Testosterone. We'll see you next time.